More exclusive Naruto Lemon videos coming out on my Boosty. You can support me by subscribing. A new subscription level has been released that you can check out. Link in description. Chapter 1. The Consequences of Thoughtless Words, or the Fox is Bored. At Rokudame the Hokage has recently had a problem. The problem was big, simply huge, red-haired, nine-tailed, maliciously sarcastic and impudent. It was called Karama. Get it, sign it. The Hokage did not understand at all what had gone through the fox's head, and why he suddenly decided to completely ruin his life. However, in response to indignant and then pleading questions, Karama only grunted and pretended to be asleep. Yeah. Why? Naruto understood that the fox must be bored, but in the end, he himself did not like sitting on his butt straight and sorting out these boring pieces of paper. But there is such a thing as duty and responsibility. Well, really, it's not his fault that the last time Naruto tried to quietly escape on a mission, preferably a creepy and very dangerous one, he was caught at the gate by Sakura. Sometimes Naruto really regretted that the beautiful Sakura-chan studied with Tsunade. It seems that if everything had been different, he would not have lain in the hospital all night, and even then, he came out of there thanks to Karama's treatment. Since then, Sakura-chan has been watching him like a kite, as if she had nothing to do, and insisted on the best performance of the duties of Hokage. This means that Naruto sat in his office, sorted through reports, received ambassadors, and listened to the terribly boring, vile, long and heartfelt howls of Karama. Naruto was going crazy. The fox seemed to take pleasure in angering his Jinchuriki. Naruto went so far as to beg the vile fox on his knees to go somewhere, even to Hachibi in the land of lightning. Just leave him alone. The fox twitched his ear in interest, and Naruto immediately inserted conditions. Do not kill anyone. Do not attack anyone. Behave quietly. Do not fight with Gyuki. Do not destroy the country of lightning brick by brick. As expected, the evil beast only laughed contemptuously and proudly replied that she preferred communication with her carrier to dying in a ditch from boredom halfway to the lightning village. Naruto rashly decided that he liked the breathing option better. The fox was offended and fell silent. Naruto was overjoyed and then became wary. Any dirty trick could be expected from the nine-tailed asshole and Naruto had no doubt that this dirty trick was already being carefully planned. Honestly, how much easier it was when the fox was an evil creature who dreamed of breaking out from under the yoke of the press. Naruto did not regret at all that Karama recognized him as his friend, but Dadabi, how much easier it was. Naruto sometimes sincerely envied simple shinobi, missions, nights by the fires, partners at his back and no mountain of papers. Not a hill. Not a hill, not a hillock I returned home, wrote a report, handed it in free. Enjoy a quiet life or go again, under the whistle of Kunai, adrenaline surges and a frantic heartbeat. Naruto was just genuinely jealous of them. And sometimes he wanted to strangle someone, for example the vile Uchiha, who was now standing in front of him and with his whole appearance expressed boundless disdain. Naruto I saw trembling hands and slightly hoarse breathing, the lung was punctured, and numerous scratches, he probably fell or made his way through the thickets, of course, Naruto saw all this. But Sasuke, of course, stood as if he had not just returned from a rank A mission, but had slept well all week in a row, ate his fill and was idle. Like Naruto, for example. This was incredibly infuriating. Anything else, Hokage-sama? Yes, Sachiha. I'm expecting a report in three hours. Sasuke bowed subtly and Naruto clutched the armrest. What a stubborn guy. And it's impossible to drive him to the hospital. He can't stand people. And Sakura, as luck would have it, fled to the land of sand, finally showing Naruto a fist that sharply killed the desire to rock the boat. Now how can I help this asshole without running into a Chidori? Hey, Uchiha! The fox suddenly called out in a gloomy drawl. Naruto became wary. Why did Kurama suddenly decide to talk to Sasuke? What are you doing, Dadabi? The fox asked Naruto, glancing sideways at the frozen Sasuke. How was the long and difficult mission? Kurama continued sarcastically, completely ignoring the carrier. You must be very tired? 
I will provide Hokage-sama with a report. Sasuke snapped and disappeared. He won't go to the hospital, Naruto realized. He'll have to go to his house today to check that the subject doesn't foolishly end up dead. Now Naruto had more important things to do. Kurama ignored all the indignant cries, screams and questions with a calmness worthy of an Uchiha. And it was very, very, very bad. Naruto stood in front of the gates of the Uchiha estate, clutching the basket of fruit that Kakashi-sensei handed him, and felt very unhappy. Sasuke didn't open it, and Naruto was tired of banging on the door. It would not be difficult to enter the estate, after all, is he Hokage or not? But Naruto very much doubted that Sasuke would accept him with open arms. The Uchiha has been nervous and irritable lately, if these concepts are generally applicable to Sasuke because he has always been nervous and irritable but in the last couple of weeks before the mission, the Uchiha rushed between completely ignoring the young Hokage and fully formed attempts to kill him, reaching the apotheosis of his arrogance. Naruto successfully fought against being ignored, itching the Uchiha's ear without stopping or taking ramen breaks, after which Sasuke moved on to the second part of the plan, and they tore the training ground or the nearby streets, depending on how lucky they were into pieces. Then, sooner or later, Sakura would come running or Tsunade Bachan, again depending on your luck and Naruto would snatch the slaps on the back of the head, and Sasuke would sneak away independently, as if he had nothing to do with it. In general, there was something wrong with the topic, and Naruto was going to deal with it. He methodically pounded on the door with a thoroughly dented basket of fruit Kakashi Sensei would still receive a mission from Naruto to the Land of Snow, for six months, for such jokes and called the Uchiha at the top of his lungs. This was behavior unworthy of the Hokage, but Naruto didn't care. Team gave in, as expected, quite quickly. The gates of the estate opened sharply and a basket of fruit, which Naruto once again swung, flew towards the dock with the proud face of the Uchiha. Naruto didn't have time to stop his swing, but Sasuke was much faster. What do you want, Do? he asked gloomily, shaking his sleeve from the ashes of the burnt basket. Hello, Topic. I'm here to visit. Naruto shifted from foot to foot, became angry with himself and decisively pushed Sasuke, who arched his eyebrow in amazement, aside. Will you at least give me some tea, Dadabi? He exclaimed cheerfully, moving towards the house. Neither a Chidori nor even a Katon flew into his back. It was a success. This is a failure. Naruto realized as he swallowed his third mug of tea. The Uchiha sitting opposite was extremely cold, silent, unfriendly and very gloomy. He glared at the Hokage with blue-black eyes, and they would have been terrifying if not for many years of immunity. How was the mission? Naruto asked falsely, again trying to start a conversation. It's fine. Sasuke snapped for the fourth time and took a sip from the mug his tea was almost untouched. Naruto hastily buried himself in his mug just to avoid looking into the eyes of the Uchiha. A small tea leaf was floating in the tea, swaying funny, and Naruto suddenly remembered, Hey, team, do you remember how we once tried to pull off the mask from Kakashi-sensei as children? Uzumaki snorted at the memories that rolled in and looked up at the Uchiha. Sasuke looked at him intently with his anthracite eyes and remained silent. Gods, helplessly and don't understand why flash through Naruto's head, and why are Uchiha's born so beautiful? Yes. Sasuke finally answered and looked away. Do you want to talk about the past? My throat became suddenly dry. Silence reigned in the kitchen, interrupted by the chirping of crickets outside the window, and Naruto cursed himself several times for his long tongue. He didn't want to talk about the past at all. Let it stay where it is. Well, why not talk? No, this hairy bastard knows how to choose the wrong moment. Someday, boy, I'll tell you why you shouldn't insult me. The fox chuckled cheerfully and not at all angrily and continued mischievously. For example, I remember a lot of interesting moments. Keep them with you. Naruto muttered. Time was lost. Sasuke will now completely withdraw into himself and will definitely not let Naruto on the threshold anymore. The Eternal... Terribly annoying game of Hokage slash subordinate, scene one, take one. Why, I'll share it with you. Besides, the Uchiha, after joyfully running away to this snake, 
missed out on a lot. The vindictive continued, and Naruto felt how cold he was inside. I wanted to hit him in the red face with a raisin gan, right now, this very second. Shut up. He hissed at Kurama, but the fox, of course, ignored it. And what did I miss? Sasuke asked unexpectedly calmly and not at all coldly, looking intently at Naruto. The Uzumaki glanced sideways at him in amazement and a little confusion, shivered under the piercing gaze, but remained silent. But Kurama, as always, Dadabi, did not remain silent. Oh, Achiha, it was a little annoying, but still vital. For example, screaming, I will return Sasuke to Kanoha, and you won't stop me, Dadabi, appeared in Naruto's monologues as often as promises to become Hokage. Can you imagine? Naruto sighed indignantly. Oh, you vindictive one, you found something, and most importantly, someone, to remember. Sasuke silently looked at Naruto, and for some reason this look made him want to run away. And don't spoil the redhead too much, do you hear, Kurama? I jumped. Or here's another, Uchiha, a very remarkable fact. The fox did not calm down. You know that my unfortunate carrier never got himself a girlfriend? I'm sorry, what? What? There are some pretty funny rumors going around your funny little village. But you, Uchiha, the great avenger, of course, don't know. Shut up. Naruto jumped to his feet, avoiding looking at Sasuke. His cheeks grew uncontrollably warm, and Naruto sincerely wanted to believe that the reason for this was anger. Shut up, stupid fox. What kind of nonsense are you talking about? That, in fact, everyone is sure that the reason for this is your great and incomparable feeling. The fox continued, ignoring the bearer. Of course, I don't know what kind of incomparable feelings you people have, but people say that it has something to do with that kiss at the academy. That's it, I went to shut up this restless one, Naruto muttered, not looking at the Uchiha. He quickly thanked him for the tea, and flew out into the beginning rain ignored Kurama's malicious chuckle and rushed along the slippery roofs towards the forbidden forest. For some reason it was very painful, somewhere deep inside, in my chest, where the heart was beating convulsively. Chapter 2 May Uncle Ku help us, or come here, Uzumaki, what kind of antics are these, Dadabi? Naruto raged in front of the cage. The water, not water, covering the floor scattered from the surges of the furious wind but the shameless fox simply ignored it with stunning indifference. Can you hear me, vile animal? Who am I talking to? Naruto kicked the open cage, hit his leg and cursed loudly. Karama, answer! The fox, with a loud sigh the restless boy woke him up after all opened his huge eye and silently stared at Naruto. Uzumaki stood by the cage, even more disheveled than usual if such a thing is even possible disheveled, rubbing his bruised leg and despite the bold words and insolent look, he looked so unhappy that Karama could not stand it, and somewhere very deep in his soul regretted it. However, Naruto doesn't need to know about this. Stop being hysterical, boy, you're acting like a girl. Oh yes, the fox chuckled disgustingly, raising his head and stretching his lips in a grin. I forgot. How doesn't apply here, right? Naruto as expected, blushed to the tips of his ears and burst into a long and heartfelt tirade, in which he reduced the fox race to some kind of parasitic animals, Kurama did not understand which ones, from the country of snow. You could, of course, be offended, but it was much more fun to bring your jinchuriki to grief. Yes, yes, of course. The fox waved it off, rolling his shoulders with pleasure. So why are you freaking out? Naruto fell silent mid-sentence and looked into Kurama's eyes so miserably that he wanted to hit him. Dadabi, why are you doing this? You know, Sasuke, he, a vile narcissist? The fox continued, not without pleasure, and then a wave of anger rose inside. Stop running around with him like a chicken with an egg. Sasuke this, Sasuke that. You behave like a maid, you can't say a word to him. What? Naruto perked up and took a step towards the cage, clenching his fists. It became uncomfortable to focus his gaze on him, and Kurama stood up with a half-roar, half-sigh. However, the new position had its advantages. Uzumaki was forced to raise his head, 
and Karama himself made a stronger impression. Yeah, he would have done it if someone else had been standing in front of him. The burish kid managed to look at him impudently and defiantly even like that. What what? You're creeping in front of him. Yeah, what if Sasachka suddenly gets offended, gets upset, starts crying loudly, loudly, and then decides to leave your village far away in search of a better life, right? If Karama was expecting indignant cries and furious denial, then he did not get it. Naruto stood straight, as if he had swallowed a stick, clenched his fists until he convulsed and was silent. It was pointless to lie to the fox, he still felt what was going on in the soul of the bearer. Naruto himself did not expect that Kurama's words would hurt so much, cut on his nerves, and knock out his breath. Was he really afraid that Sasuke would leave again? Yeah, Naruto will let him. He will find you, catch up with you, and knock the thoughts of escape right down your throat, once again, if the last one didn't help. And if he doesn't find it, he won't catch up. He won't return. Then. What then? Put aside snotty thoughts. Karama roared and slammed his tail on the wall a snake-like crack crawled all the way to the ceiling and bashfully closed. Trust me. Naruto looked at the fox's sly grin, and honestly, for the first time in their friendship, he no longer wanted to rely on the demon. But it was too late. Uzumaki was acting very strange. Sasuke, of course, had long been accustomed to the fact that, in general, the Hokage's behavior could be described as mock normality, and this did not bother him. Until recently. After all, Naruto was always strange, noisy, always getting into places he shouldn't. This isn't strange at all. But Naruto had been avoiding him since that ill-fated conversation when his little animal got into something it shouldn't. And it was unnerving. Naruto was always there. Even in those days when it seemed that there was no way out of hopeless despair, and Orochimaru's oily gaze slid over the skin, and the gods see how much Sasuke wanted to cut that long neck and trample the heart torn out of his chest into the dirt. But Naruto was nearby, smiling from his sunny and happy Kanoha, and it turned out, Sasuke will endure, and Orochimaru, and the endless race for his brother, and his life is not life. Naruto was always there, and it was incredibly infuriating, to the point of black spots before his eyes from wild overloads and training with the only goal, to defeat his brother, to become stronger, stronger, even stronger. Or forget? Forget the sunny look, the wide smile, the annoying brightness. It succeeded. Sasuke honestly forgot about Naruto, crossed him out of his memory, aimed at the only person, brother, killer, executioner. Sasuke may also be a killer, but Sasuke is not an executioner. Neither Orochimaru, nor Itachi, nor Madara got this out of him. Naruto was forgotten. Like Konoha, life was behind him, just as the entire world around him was forgotten, everything except the goal and the mad search for power. Therefore, when Sasuke returned to Konoha, it's funny to say he returned, as if someone asked him. He kept looking and couldn't understand. Has the sky always been this blue? Was the sun really shining that bright? Could he really forget this obnoxious boy bright, eclipsing both the sky and the sun with his radiance? Didn't he realize that all this time, that's an insanely long time? Naruto was there? And Naruto has friends. And Naruto Kurama. Naruto has limitless chakra and a charming smile. Naruto has all of Konoha. But Sasuke was not going to share him with anyone. The Uchiha had always been possessive, creepy and terrible, and he wasn't going to he wasn't going to. Let the Uzumaki move away from you further than the radius of the village. No one knows this, and will never know, but sometimes Sasuke was afraid to wake up and realize that he doesn't remember either Naruto or Konoha, doesn't remember anything, nothing except the eternal race for power. And Sasuke was even more afraid of waking up and not even understanding not realizing that the sun had disappeared behind the horizon, the sky had turned gray, and the world had died. Sasuke was not going to let Naruto go, and even if the reason for such dependence was not clear, which, I must admit, was annoying to the point of gnashing teeth, so be it. Sasuke was selfish, and he liked it that way. Therefore, Uzumaki will still get his due when Sasuke finally catches him. 
After all, a dope can't run from him forever, can he? Chapter 3 Into Battle Or Karama Starts Attacking Naruto was going through reports from the Shinobi Academy these sweet teachers of little monsters had once again shoved a list of repair costs somewhere sometimes Naruto was sincerely perplexed at how exactly such a sweet and neat Iruka sensei ended up surrounded by such scoundrels. Iruka sensei even managed to demand reports from Kakashi sensei, which Naruto suspected that they had been heavily modified by someone very caring then ended up on his desk almost on time. No, how boring, huh? Who would have known that the work of Hokage, in addition to universal respect and recognition, brings such boredom? I remember I told you about this at the inauguration. What did you answer me? You don't understand a damn thing. Naruto was still sulking at Kurama, but he was so desperately bored that he didn't have to choose who to talk to. Since then, my opinion, Dadabi, has not changed at all. Pfft. And why do you need this boring job? Fox snorted. When you served in Anbu, at least I wasn't so sad. Yes, you got me with your complaints about Sasuke. Why does he command you? You are stronger than him. Blah blah blah. Naruto indignantly slammed the document he finally found on the table. And in general, you don't like everything. Why were you silent for sixteen years then? I was sleeping. Karama replied meaningfully. And now, what happens, boy? You woke me up with this war of yours, in which we had great fun, and as soon as I got the taste, I sat down to boring work and don't plan to get out from behind this table anymore. The Hokage's job is very important. Naruto lied unconvincingly. Go on a mission! Karama roared, and Naruto winced. Yes, I would love to, Dadabi. But who will work for me? I'll agree. The fox snapped, and Naruto had no doubt he would agree. Well, come to an agreement. Tell me how it turns out. Karama grumbled a little more, but, apparently calmed by the agreement, fell silent. Naruto sighed and returned to the hated documents. The fox was quietly tossing and turning somewhere inside and Uzumaki felt that he was not sleeping. How to drink and give something is plotting. Naruto. Eh? Out of surprise, Uzumaki squeezed the paper too tightly and it now resembled something picturesque, but alas, not official. How was the night? Karama asked innocently. He knows, Naruto understood. Catastrophe. My cheeks became uncontrollably warm, and unflattering remarks about the red ass came to mind. The fox himself was silent, as if he really needed an answer. Fine, Naruto muttered and crossed his fingers. Ah, Karama said still innocently and he fell silent. Amazing. I remembered against my will, darkness, heat that penetrates to the bones, hot, hot, and without all this, without him, unbearably, incredibly cold, silence, interrupted by hoarse breathing, and a whisper that turns the soul. Dark shine of anthracite eyes. And the whole world has only one name. Ha, I'll dream about something like this. Naruto shook himself, knocking the memories out of his head. It wasn't enough for anyone to see him in this state. Did you listen? Did you notice the last picture of foxes? It seems not. He is silent, busy with something. At times it seemed to Naruto that the nine-tailed infestation considered it its duty to provide the carrier with a short but fun life, full of stress, which you rarely get on a mission. Documents winked from the table, and Naruto cautiously reached out to them. Who knows what else Karama might do? But the fox was silent although he was not sleeping, and they spent the next half hour in deafening silence. Naruto! Naruto, completely focused, which, admittedly, happened to him only in cases of complete reluctance to communicate, jumped up to the ceiling. What else do you want, Dadabi? We need to go see the woman. To what other woman? Don't make yourself look stupider than you are. To that woman. Naruto sighed. Karama very clearly separated all people, and Naruto was tired of fighting him. Uzumaki generally doubted that Karama knew that they had gender equality. At least he called the fifth woman. Sakura-chan was awarded the proud girl, sometimes he said, she, with mocking irony about Kushina, and that's all. The rest were contemptuously ignored. Among the male names in the fox's vocabulary were Naruto, 
which is not surprising, Kakashi, and sometimes Uchiha. But it sounded much more often, so Uchiha can be crossed out. The remaining shinobi were divided into Green Face, for Gai Sensei, this one of yours, for Iraka, rapper, for Killer B, and yours, for Naruto's friends. And Madara, there was also Madara, yes, but they tried not to remember him. All those shinobi kanohas that were not included in the previous list were called Your Little People. Karama considered the rest to be trash underfoot and had no intention of changing his opinion. Why should I go to Bakon? You will ask her to work for you while you are on a mission, the fox said as a matter of course. Are you crazy? Naruto was quite rightly indignant. He still remembered with what undisguised relief Bakon handed over the post of Hokage to him. He also remembered her grandiose party under the slogan, Everyone Drinks. It was then that Tsunade Bakon told him that she would never pick up a pen again in her life. After a couple of months as Hokage, Naruto absolutely and completely agreed with her. Okay, I'll talk to her. Karama did not calm down. Yeah, she'll beat me. Naruto shook his head, out of harm's way. Go and talk yourself. And how do you imagine this? Karama responded in a bored, uninvolved tone. Naruto thought about it. It wasn't that he had never let the fox out before. It was more that he simply never left him alone. And in the village, everyone is aware of the relationship between the Hokage and his biju. So if you ask the fox to behave unnoticed, say, to Tsunade and back. Yeah. Of course. But I wanted to go on a mission. Very, very strong. And Naruto decided. Okay, redhead, just... Yes, yes, don't kill anyone, don't attack anyone, behave quietly, don't fight with a woman, don't destroy Kanoha brick by brick. I remember. The fox somehow agreed too hastily. Naruto had a bad feeling of deja vu, but he could not remember such a situation, so with a heavy soul and a bad feeling he opened the seal. Without the fox inside, it was somehow empty and unusual. Naruto shivered driving away the disgusting feeling, and stared into the eyes of Karama, who was shaking himself opposite him. He behaved somehow very calmly, did not rush off with wild laughter to scare the lost spies and ambassadors of other countries. He sat down next to the table, his tail curled up comfortably like a dog set free. This was not normal. A worm of doubt began to stir in Naruto's soul, evolving into an anaconda with every second. Tell me, kid. Karama confirming all suspicions, stretched out his mouth in a wide grin. Last night you called the Uchiha so hard to play cards? Naruto gasped in indignation. His cheeks burned with fire. Hell, he began to blush worse than Hinata, and the red vial, G. Muck, only grinned even wider and finished off from the windowsill. Because I foolishly thought that this dream began with your charmingly innocent first kiss. It seems he was with a bastard. Am I not confusing anything? And jumped out into the street, immediately onto the next roof, and now it's impossible to catch up with him. It's easier to catch the wind or tame the elements. Karama. The scream that came from the Hokage's residence shook all the glass and Kanoha. The demonic laughter that rang out in response clarified everything, and those who grabbed Kanai the shinobi, sighing with relief, returned to their business. Chapter 4 About Red Devils or where is your report, Kakashi-san, Tsunade did not consider herself an unhappy woman, yes, she had lost many, but who among the shinobi had not? In the end, she succeeded as a physician, she managed, quite successfully, I must say, the great village for many years. Her grandfather would have been proud of her. She raised a good student the best doctor in the fire country, after her, of course. She met Naruto and he, the brat, calls her granny and she doesn't even resist. And friendship with Rokudame is worth a lot. Don't even be Naruto Hokage she considered it an honor to know him. Certainly, Tsunade did not consider herself an unhappy woman, and so now she sat and methodically got drunk in an empty bar not at all because fifty years ago, to the day, she first met her team and her teacher. And not at all because she is now the only one who bears the title of Sani. That's not why at all. Tsunade only drank her sixth decanter while, what a trifle. 
That's why she was sincerely surprised at the demonic figure that appeared in front of her nose. She attacked mechanically, but the devil was a disgrace. Should devils have red hair? Where is the noble green color? The devil dodged with amazing grace and sat down on the fragments of the wall, irritably shaking his tails. I wonder where Sunade has seen this face before? There were at least nine in the eyes, because the devil had exactly nine tails, Sunade knows for sure, she counted. Something of the wrong color condescendingly endured the finger poking at itself, and did not even try to speak. This is correct, because this is Sunade's glitch, and until she finally figures out from which bins her subconscious revealed this, no glitch dares to interfere with her conversations. Who knows where the angry owner jumped out from, and Tsunade prepared to yell at him. After all, she is the former Hokage. Let her send a bill for the pilgrims to the residence. The owner suddenly braked, looked strangely at the torn wall, and quietly apologized and left. Tsunade glanced sideways in the same direction, came across the face of the devil what a misfortune, and where had she seen him before? And came to the conclusion that her personal glitch was not personal at all. Ugliness. Doesn't she already have rights to the confidentiality of her own glitches? Who are you? She finally coordinated her brain's attempts to clarify the situation with her desperately slurred tongue. Hmm. Come to your senses, woman. I'm not going to waste my time on you. A sharp, hoarse, growling voice cut through the nerves, and Tsunade instantly sobered up. She is a medic with many years of experience and she knew how to lose control of herself within reasonable limits for a shinobi. This is, for example, when you are lying unconscious, and a second later you are ready to calculate the flight path of a kunai thrown against the wind a hundred meters into the enemy's back. Well, she did a lot of things here, she will have to apologize to the owner, it's a good bar. What did I forget here, this one? What do you want, Kyubi? She wasn't afraid of him, honestly she wasn't but she couldn't run up in a familiar manner, slap him on the skin and call him by name. No, excuse me. And who could? Who else but Naruto? Who but the crazy one Naruto, and maybe Hitaki, whom the fox sometimes allowed to touch him. The rest tried to stay as far away from the demon as possible, and all Naruto's fervent assurances that the Kyubi would not touch him burned in the flames of wild eyes. Naruto may have been sure but no one could vouch for Kyubi himself. However, the Uchiha was not yet afraid of the Ninetales, but when, by the will of fate and Naruto's oversight, they found themselves nearby, the situation escalated with such speed that all the involuntary spectators were in a hurry to retreat. And how these two dealt with it is a headache for Naruto. The Ninetales collapsed on an almost horizontally fallen wall and slightly closed its wild eyes. He snorted, tearing Tsunade out of his thoughts and moved his tails his eye instantly caught the movement, his body tensed, his brain frantically analyzed the information where would it hit. Where to jump? QB snorted again, almost mockingly. He sees everything. He knows everything, a monster from terrible dreams, there is an abyss of destructive power in him, and all this power is in the hands of a boy, young, but who has experienced so much that not every zenin has ever dreamed of. At times, Tsunade sincerely admired Naruto's impenetrable faith, a faith that broke the ice not only in the heart of his best friend, but also in many other people. And non-humans. I have a request for you, the fox finally said, wincing with such an expression that Tsunade immediately understood that Kyubi's request was not subject to discussion. Yeah. Here comes the nine-tailed ball of fur. Attack the wrong one. Explain. Tsunade nodded regally. Karama opened his narrowed eye and grinned. Tsunade thought it was almost approving. Apparently she hasn't completely sobered up yet. I want to straighten Naruto's brains. Many people wanted this. Tsunade agreed, not understanding what the fox was getting at. Not everyone succeeded. Are you sure you can handle it? Tsunade was playing with fire. And in the literal sense hot sparks of power ran across the red skin every now and then. Tsunade played with fire but she did this every time she interacted with the Nine Tails. It was almost delightful to understand that before you was the ancient embodiment of the elemental mind, to understand and not be afraid. Tsunade herself no longer remembered where the fear had gone, 
but she didn't even try to remember. I'm sure, woman, the fox laughed in a low, drawing growl. I need you to send Naruto on a mission. Together. The difficulty of the mission doesn't matter. I will ensure their safety. For what? Tsunade did not understand. And I have no right to send the current Hokage on a mission. Who will work then? Yes. The fox nodded his forehead. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, woman. Hitaki Kakashi had many problems that he successfully ignored, many current affairs that he successfully ran away from, and many unturned reports that brought with him a serious and determined chunin. On the threshold of his apartment at nine in the morning, yes. It's not that Hitaki couldn't wake up instantly, but still in his own village, under the watchful eye of the Hokage, Kakashi really wanted to believe this, and the even more watchful eye of Kurama, who doesn't like unnecessary noise and fuss with enemies, Hataki believed in this more. Only Naruto wouldn't spill the beans. Kakashi liked to sleep longer. Somewhere before lunch, or better yet before sunset. As it turned out, Iruka's statistics were on fire, which Hataki successfully spoiled for him. And only Hataki, as Iruka sensei did not fail to clarify. Hmm. The Chunin was very determined. He greeted politely and adamantly informed that Kakashi Sensei could do with him whatever came into his perverted Zenin head, but he, Iruka, would only leave feet first without reports. Kakashi sighed, stepped back half a step, letting the desperately cowardly Iruka into the apartment, and went to the kitchen to put on tea. Iruka Sensei won't just sit there while Hataki extracts from his memory the details of missions from a month ago and even writes down these details on paper. That's right Kakashi desperately scratches his disheveled head and taps his mask with a pencil, and all this under Iruka's piercing gaze they were caught first by the feeling of someone else's deadly chakra, and then by a very impolite knock, from which the glass in the window frame trembled. Kakashi got up, opened the window, letting Kurama into the kitchen, and sat down at the table again, glancing sideways at Iruka, who had frozen warily. Kurama turned around on the cutting table, decided something for himself, collapsed next to the sink, pushing the unwashed mug left from the evening with his tails, and finally said, Good day, Hataki. Yes, yes, Kakashi responded absent-mindedly. He couldn't remember, did he burn that sticky shinobi? Or was it someone else, and he hit him on the head with a sutun? It was getting towards evening, thoughts were confused, and his stomach was growling in protest, not wanting to withstand such a test when he and Kakashi were not on a mission. What did you want? Hataki asked, scratching his forehead under the bandana, desperate to remember how exactly he killed this elusive, in his, Kakashi's, thoughts, shinobi. Kurama was silent, only mysteriously narrowed his eyes and grinned. Well, I'll go, Kakashi-sensei, Iruka called quietly, and Hataki perked up. Will you bring the reports to headquarters tomorrow? Kakashi felt a strange desire to kick Kurama out and convince Iruka to stay. However, well, what are you? The fox suddenly intervened, turning his gaze to Iruka and drawing out his words. You, Iruka sensei Kakashi prompted. Yes, yes, Kurama dismissed dismissively. You can stay. I have a request for you, Hataki. Kakashi sighed. Well, at least you don't have to write reports. And yet, how did he kill that shinobi? Chapter 5 May the power of youth help us, or how Naruto greeted ambassadors. Kurama climbed over the drain to the roof of the building next to Kakashi's house, jumped over the flower tub shinobi village, damn it, and rushed across the rooftops, slowly heading east. All that remained was to find the Uchiha quarter, and if the foxes had not been sleeping every time Naruto was about to visit the bastard then this would have been easier. But what can you do? Kurama couldn't stand people, and he had a special attitude towards this particular clan. Completely humanized, Kurama realized gloomily. If only one of the brothers could hear him now, that would be it. His reputation would be ruined. It's not that the Nine Tails cares about his own appearance in the eyes of his brothers, it's just that when you are known as heartless and the most vile of us, as Shikaku liked to say, Accompanying his words with insane laughter life becomes easier for many. 
Sometimes Karama seriously thought about whether he should destroy this village into a couple of pebbles and a meter-long layer of ash. However, he was stopped by his complete reluctance to somehow coincide in ideas with this pathetic, ugly biped, Madara. To Madara Karama had very special feelings, and even Naruto could not erase this hatred from him. Yes, he didn't even try, to be honest, he even divided it. Who would have thought that Naruto could hate so purely and sincerely that Karama at first mistook his hatred for echoes of his own feelings? There were several more negative aspects to the idea of destroying Konoha. Karama, of course, was not so good at understanding the logic and feelings of people, but the fox had no doubt that Naruto would try to stop him. I didn't want to fight with the boy. Even as a joke. Even for training purposes. People's bodies are too, too fragile, even if these people are Hokages. Karama, just didn't want to look for a new lair. After all, in this village you could sleep as much as you wanted. Fabulous. All that remains is to plant a flower garden in Naruto's subconscious and start inviting his friends for pies. The one-tailed one will laugh. The roof, wet after the evening rain, slid under his paws, and Karama had to use chakra. If it weren't for the stupid screams of Naruto, who was very worried about the houses destroyed by the fox, it would have long been possible to release Chakra and find this damned block with normal height. But no. As if it's Karama's fault that people, even shinobi, build such rat shelters where you can't even put your paw. Karama hid in the shadow of an old oak tree, successfully avoiding a meeting with the ANBU who rushed past with lightning speed vigilant security. You can't say anything, you'll have to tell the kid to select his little people more carefully, and sniffed. It was quite humiliating to ask for help, but talking to a woman couldn't take that long and Karama didn't want Naruto to guess where the fox was going. Greenface turned out to be half a mile to the north, where there seemed to be a training ground. Well, no one doubted it, Karama thought, getting closer to the idiot in legs doing push-ups. The green-faced man noticed him his back tensed, and his breathing hitched for a moment, but he did not stop counting. He was approaching a thousand— and remembering people's love for round numbers completely unmotivated, in the fox's opinion Karama decided to wait. He was not mistaken. At a thousand, the green-faced one cheerfully jumped up, dusted off his hands and looked at Karama with a fanatical gleam in his eyes. Greetings, my young friend. Well, yes, Karama responded, twitching his ear. He had been thinking for a long time. Should he inform the green-faced man that he had outgrown the concept of Young, years ago, well, another thousand years ago, who was counting? Although who cares, what brought you to me, my young friend? Karama winced. Where is the Uchiha clan quarter? The green-faced man even fell silent for a moment in surprise. Thought, irritating Karama more and more with his shining friendliness. Next to this eccentric, the fox even came to the thought that everything could be much worse. For example, the fourth could imprison him in a green-faced one. Or, Karama grinned at the thought, at his clone whoever he was. Nightmare. Achiha? The thick-browed man finally realized and waved his hand to the northwest. There. I can help you. Even the foxes were afraid of his enthusiasm, although he would not admit it even on pain of death. Be there. Karama growled and hurriedly moved in the indicated direction. May the power of youth help you the green-faced one shouted after him. God forbid! Karama sincerely denied, and Naruto would have laughed nicely if he had heard this from the fox. That is okay. Soon Karama will laugh. Karama, without hiding, walked through the streets of Konoha, not paying attention to the hastily parting people. Someone nodded in greeting, and Karama which just doesn't create a good mood sometimes even nodded in response. However, it's still a shinobi Kanoha. Why not say hello to them, since they are not even afraid of him? Hmm, well, almost. People, what can you take from them? Sasuke did not want to go on a common mission with Naruto. But Kurama didn't ask much. He told the Uchiha the good news, voicing it as an order from the Hokage. He bravely resisted the urge to break his neck when he suggested that Kurama had been maiden. Errant animal. He hardly even growled. 
and the door that appeared in the Uchiha's house again instead of a wall is not at all due to incontinence, and in general, the Uchiha should thank him. It became much more convenient to leave the kitchen. Karama was in a great mood, he didn't want to kill or devour anyone which was something he rarely had, he was ready to communicate something he had never seen before, and his soul, or whatever it was, was warmed by the awareness of the grandeur of his plan. And a new door in the Uchiha's house. Yes. True, the mood was slightly spoiled by the woman with whom I had to clarify the details. She looked at him like a wolf ha, feigned complete disdain well, well, an absolute disinterest yes, of course. But the fox successfully dealt with the woman, sent her to Kakashi and told her to discuss everything with him. The woman snorted indignantly, but Karama had no doubt that she would obey. Chakra Naruto flickered a couple of hundred meters to the east the iridescent sound of the wind, instantly turning into a hurricane roar and Karama still slowly walked along the already familiar streets. It's Shirakuraman, of course, and where else to look for the restless Hokage? But this time the boy outdid himself, Karama realized when he sensed strangers. It's fine to spend the entire lunchtime in this eatery. But dragging ambassadors there. For negotiations. Hokage, fuck him. The girl will return, as if she will blow his head off, and this time Karama will not only not stop her, but will also not treat the idiot. And the situation needs to be corrected. Naruto said something to these shinobi they have heavy chakra stone? Periodically his speech was interrupted by squelching. This was another portion of ramen being sucked into the abyss of the Hokage's stomach. The shinobi smelled of slight contempt, a little interest yet Naruto spoke to the point, oddly enough, and most of all with amazement. Of course, the legendary ninja who completed the war, the sixth Hokage Kanoha had little connection with the quarrelsome boy who had no concept of subordination. Plus they couldn't sense his chakra. Well, what about chakra? Naruto hid it masterfully, Karama took care of it. It is not the case that people tremble with fear as soon as they see the Hokage. Although, of course, only Naruto himself thought so, Karama was all for it. But, as always, he was not asked. However, the proper fear of Karama ensured that the sixth was at his best. And respect the Hokage dealt with this himself. You just had to get to know him better. Ichiraku Ramen was surrounded by ANBU's silent shadows guarding the Hokage. As if they could protect Naruto from something he couldn't handle on his own. Karama jumped from a couple of meters, already in flight shrinking to the size of a cat, landed on the shoulder of someone who didn't even flinch he caught it, and already straightening his tails along the back of his jinshuriki, he wondered what it was, interestingly, Naruto couldn't handle it himself. The smell of fear that cut into his sense of smell prevented him from thinking about this. Karama glanced at the shinobi of the stone, caught the ragged breath, the convulsively pounding heart, the twitching Adam's apple and stretched his lips into a grin. Same thing. Naruto was saying something about boundaries, not paying attention to the tension in the air. Karama shivered with pleasure, as if accidentally tapping his tails on the sixth cloak. Shinobi were afraid of stone. Positively, today was a good day. Chapter 6 About Vengeful Women, or Why You Can't Quarrel with Fifth Naruto parted ways with the envoys from the Land of Stone only late in the evening, having exhausted them to the point of being completely unable to spy and snoop. All this time, Karama was lying like a rag on his shoulder, from time to time yawning with forty-two sparkling, amazingly sharp teeth, stretching, as if by chance, stretching his tails, and periodically expressing immeasurable sorrow associated with the same immeasurable hunger. Foxy, it's clear. In general, I helped as best I could. The lanterns were shining softly on the street, and Kanoha was making noise, as if in the distance. The moon was slowly rising over the village, highlighting the stone sculptures of the Hokage, and Naruto sighed peacefully, looking up at the fourth. His own face was only carved out next to Babulkan's, the scaffolding cast shadows on the monument, distorting his features. The fourth smiled softly. Do you hear, boy, there's an Uchiha in the north, coming here. Run, or what? That's why, oh why, that nasty redhead always ruins everything. The fox jumped off his shoulder as Naruto frantically rushed south, 
and growled something about behavior unworthy of the Hokage and cowardice. Well, to hell with it, we need to get out of here and meet Sasuke Naruto was completely and utterly unprepared right now. Not ready at all. He often dreamed of the Uchiha this is not surprising, for more than two years Naruto thought about how to return him to Konoha. Sasuke returned, but the dreams did not go away. He flashed in them as often as Kurama, and lately. Lately, Naruto tried not to remember his dreams. I tried, but as soon as I met the Uchiha's gaze, a casual glance, on the street, among passers-by, it surged, rolled in a hot wave, and did not want to let go. Neither then, in front of the surprised Sasuke, nor later, when he sat in his office and listened to the convulsively pounding heart and the quiet sniffling of the fox. Something very strange was happening to him, and Naruto didn't want to think about it at all. He had enough of the fox's hints. Naruto jumped onto someone's balcony, moved from it to the roof and crashed into Sasuke with a bang. No, sometimes he just hated, hated this arrogant, vile traitor fox. What are you doing here, team? Karama asked Naruto silently. Sasuke looked intently, threateningly, and was silent. What does he allow himself, Dadabi? Team. Sasuke chuckled, took a step forward Naruto recoiled convulsively and grabbed the Hokage's hand. Let's go. For some reason my heart sank to my feet and began to beat convulsively. The Uchiha's fingers wrapped a tight, hot ring around his wrist, and Naruto, without even resisting, followed him. There was a heavy emptiness in my head. Sasuke led him to some kind of gateway, also for me, found a place of communication, and turned around sharply. Hokage-sama, he drawled sarcastically. Are you aware that you and I have been assigned to a mission to the Land of Snow? Naruto, fascinated by the fact that Sasuke never lowered his hand, blinked stupidly. Apparently not. Sasuke grinned harshly. Hokage-sama, do you know the duration of our stay there? I was getting better and better at blinking stupidly. Then I'll let you know. Sasuke unclenched his fingers and moved closer. For two and a half months, Hokage-sama. Naruto exhaled, looking into the anthracite black eyes. Sasuke was very, very close. Sasuke was breathing quietly. Sasuke was very annoyed, and Sasuke now said that. What, what? The Uchiha chuckled angrily and moved away. No joke, Naruto realized. Yours, Dadabi. Karama. The fox running past the tenth gate of the forbidden forest twitched his ear and turned around. Chakra Naruto shone in the south with a menacing, furious glow. It was clearly not worth getting caught by the stupid cub. Especially when he finds out what kind of mission the fifth gave them. That is okay. Then he'll say thank you again. Nine tails chuckled and ran in the direction of the residence with soft, creeping jumps. This vengeful woman definitely has a sense of humor. Sometimes Sasuke was genuinely perplexed as to why Naruto still became Hokage. He was heartbroken, but still admitted that Naruto was a strong shinobi. Well, strong enough to be Hokage. Perhaps, sometimes Naruto even became serious, thoughtful, and thoughtful. Very sometimes. But unfortunately, most of the time Naruto remained the same eccentric idiot. The most unpredictable ninja number one. An arrogant and irresponsible scoundrel, which he had been for all twelve. Dajanin. Years. Which, Sasuke was absolutely sure of this, he remained the entire time he was trying to return him to Konoha. Sasuke returned, but the dreams did not go away. He flashed in them as often as Karama, and lately. Lately, Naruto tried not to remember his dreams. I tried, but as soon as I met the Uchiha's gaze, a casual glance, on the street, among passers-by, it surged, rolled in a hot wave, and did not want to let go. Neither then, in front of the surprised Sasuke, nor later, when he sat in his office and listened to the convulsively pounding heart and the quiet sniffling of the fox. Something very strange was happening to him, and Naruto didn't want to think about it at all. He had enough of the fox's hints. Naruto jumped onto someone's balcony, moved from it to the roof and crashed into Sasuke with a bang. No, sometimes he just hated, hated this arrogant, vile traitor fox. What are you doing here, team? Karama asked Naruto silently. 
Sasuke looked intently, threateningly, and was silent. What does he allow himself, Dadabi? Team. Sasuke chuckled, took a step forward Naruto recoiled convulsively and grabbed the Hokage's hand. Let's go. For some reason my heart sank to my feet and began to beat convulsively. The Uchiha's fingers wrapped a tight, hot ring around his wrist, and Naruto, without even resisting, followed him. There was a heavy emptiness in my head. Sasuke led him to some kind of gateway, also for me, found a place of communication, and turned around sharply. Hokage-sama, he drawled sarcastically. Are you aware that you and I have been assigned to a mission to the Land of Snow? Naruto, fascinated by the fact that Sasuke never lowered his hand, blinked stupidly. Apparently not. Sasuke grinned harshly. Hokage-sama, do you know the duration of our stay there? I was getting better and better at blinking stupidly. Then I'll let you know. Sasuke unclenched his fingers and moved closer. For two and a half months, Hokage-sama. Naruto exhaled, looking into the anthracite black eyes. Sasuke was very, very close. Sasuke was breathing quietly. Sasuke was very annoyed, and Sasuke now said that. What, what? The Uchiha chuckled angrily and moved away. No joke, Naruto realized. Yours, Dadabi. Karama. The fox running past the tenth gate of the forbidden forest twitched his ear and turned around. Chakra Naruto shone in the south with a menacing, furious glow. It was clearly not worth getting caught by the stupid cub. Especially when he finds out what kind of mission the fifth gave them. That is okay. Then he'll say thank you again. Nine Tails chuckled and ran in the direction of the residence with soft, creeping jumps. This vengeful woman definitely has a sense of humor. Sometimes Sasuke was genuinely perplexed as to why Naruto still became Hokage. He was heartbroken, but still admitted that Naruto was a strong shinobi. Well, strong enough to be Hokage. Perhaps, sometimes Naruto even became serious, thoughtful, and thoughtful. Very sometimes. But unfortunately, most of the time Naruto remained the same eccentric idiot. The most unpredictable ninja number one. An arrogant and irresponsible scoundrel, which he had been for all twelve. Dajanin. Years. Which, Sasuke was absolutely sure of this, he remained the entire time he was trying to return him to Konoha. Naruto was definitely not the right person to hold such a responsible position. Sometimes Sasuke was genuinely perplexed as to why Naruto still became Hokage. But most of the time, Sasuke was sure that no one other than Naruto could hold this position. Who else can put presumptuous ambassadors in their place with a few words and a hard look? Who else can smile at a child so that he runs home with delight and tells his parents about it? In whose other movements is such incredible, amazing power visible? Who else can, while rushing about business, catch the spies who have sneaked in, and then shrug their shoulders and say that. The guys from a work so hard, they also need to rest. Who else can whine about how hard it all is, but still manage to get a hundred things done? Who if not Naruto? Who else? It's funny, but during the short time that he was Hokage, not a single fighter died on missions. There were injuries, often severe, but the groups of shinobi were always distributed in such a way that the medics were there in time. The neighbors of the fire country calmed down, friendly relations, which previously did not exist at all, are now stronger than ever. The Kage had an inexplicable sympathy for the eccentric Hokage. Konoha was thriving. And even the Nine Tails, periodically appearing over the village, did not evoke trembling horror in people, but memories of her Jinchuriki. But now, having listened for the tenth time to how cold it is here, how boring Sasuke is, how could anyone even agree to this? Dadabi, the Hokage and the ANBU captain are chipping away the ice on the roofs. Sasuke wanted to change his mind. And kill Naruto. And the Nine Tails, who, as it turned out, arranged this. Mission. For them. Sasuke was very angry. Kurama, who was falling apart in Naruto's subconscious was simply happy. Everything went according to plan. Chapter 7 God's Dandelions, or Why You Shouldn't Help Old People, Thank You, Thank You. The old man, without ceasing to bow, shook Naruto's hand a couple more times. 
Do not mention it, Uzumaki said for the fifth time, exhaling a cloud of steam and smiling forcefully. The old man did not let go of his hand. Thank you, I was so uncomfortable, but you helped me so much. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Naruto tried to pull his hand out of the old man's strong paws. Alas. The old man either nodded or bowed, constantly shaking his palm. Can I help you with anything else? Naruto asked, internally freezing. The disgusting old man gods dandelion, so be it hastily nodded, and began another heartfelt rebuke about the leaky floor, the broken fence, the broken kennel of the kid a hundred kilogram beast, which Naruto preferred to bypass on the tenth road, as well as other and other troubles that befell this head unhappy person. Typically, these troubles began to interfere with him right now, when two fire shinobi, succumbing to the angelic appearance of the old man, accepted the invitation to stay with him. Sasuke said, oh, he said that it was necessary to live with the headmen of the village, as they had planned at the beginning. But Naruto wouldn't be Naruto if he listened to the Uchiha. Of course, Dadabi, he couldn't warn the subject normally, without any hints. In less than two days that they stayed in this abandoned village in the very heart of the country of snow, Naruto managed to chip ice from the roof, fix this very roof, repair the fence, poke around the kid, and then run away from him through all three streets of the village, and listen countless complaints from the poor, unfortunate old man. When the poor and unfortunate went out into the street to feed the kid and barked in a heroic voice. Place. Naruto felt deceived and went to investigate. It turned out that it was still necessary to seal the basement, dig up the snow behind the house, repair the cellar, and in general, it would be easier to demolish the house and build a new one. Naruto cursed the old man, Fifth, Kurama and Sasuke, who even after the roof, realized what was going on here and went. On reconnaissance, dope. Intelligence service. His mother. So Naruto believed him. The village with an intricate name, which Naruto could not remember, included 200 permanent residents and 400 merchants of the northern caravan, who, having miscalculated the weather, were stuck in this wretched area until spring. And everything would have been fine each caravan would not move anywhere without being accompanied by a detachment of shinobi if this village, three stakes, two courtyards, had not been located in the winter hunting grounds of some. Naruto also could not remember this. But that's not the point, modified animals. Another experimenter further experimented until the appearance of tall animals about two meters at the withers with skin that could only be pierced by chakra. Concentrated, that's clear. The animals loved fresh meat and fit perfectly into the fauna of the land of snow, destroying the latter. The shinobi villages did not interfere the land of snow was quite poor, and its ruler was quite happy with hiring a group of shinobi for caravans twice a year. The residents adapted themselves by crossing ordinary wolfhounds with these beasts, and getting monsters like the kid. A couple of hundred dogs and volleys of fire were enough for the genetically modified fauna to look for more amenable prey. Alas, the merchants were not as seasoned and calm as God's dandelion, and they demanded protection from the ruler. And then fatal circumstances coincided, including Karama and the vengeful fifth. Thunder mixture. And so the Hokage and the ANBU captain from Kanahegakura are repairing the roofs of God's dandelion for the next two months. Or, more correctly, the Hokage is fixing things, and the ANBU captain goes on reconnaissance, so that Naruto doesn't already know that there is not a single living genetically modified soul within a radius of a hundred miles. Sasuke returned in the late afternoon, when the snowstorm had finally cleared up, the ubiquitous merchants had disappeared from the streets and even the frost-resistant residents hid in their homes. The kid muffled muffledly from under the snowdrift, but was too lazy to get out, and the Uchiha calmly walked past, heading to the place where the door was. It definitely was before. There was a deaf voice from above, and Sasuke narrowed his eyes, activating his Sharingan normal vision was of no use anyway. Well, who would doubt it? Uzumaki, why the hell are you hanging around there? His TV doesn't show. Naruto growled, drowning out the blizzard, and Sasuke dodged a stream of snow flying from the roof. You imagine? TV. Of course he doesn't show it, Dadabi. Naruto said something else, 
but Sasuke didn't hear him. Hanging around under the door, in the cold, in which Chakra hardly helps, was stupid. We had to go into the house and wait for it there. Sasuke chuckled, jumped onto the roof, almost slipped on the crumbling snow, pushed Naruto aside, who was bubbling and actively working with a shovel, and with a directed flow of chakra melted the snow near the antenna. Uzumaki muttered something like, I could do it myself, Dadabi, and adjusted the antenna. Let's go, Dol. Naruto looked at Sasuke frowningly and walked towards the edge of the roof. Stop. The water froze into an icy crust, it was covered with snow, and it was not at all surprising that the inattentive idiot slipped and fell into a snowdrift. Right at the baby dozing there. Naruto commented somehow pitifully. Arararararar. The kid appreciated the meeting and bared his ten centimeter fangs. Get out of here. The conversation materialized on Uzumaki's chest continued. Karama. Sasuke silently descended from the ledge, watched the screaming kid running away at full speed, and ignoring Naruto wheezing under the nine tails, trampled in the snow, gasping for breath, went into the house. Sometimes Uzumaki was just incredibly annoying. It's good that neither Naruto, who had Kurama sitting on his face, nor Sasuke, who was proudly walking towards Sasuke's house, saw the nine tails creepy grin. This is very good. Chapter 8 about the difficulties of heating, or how to stay warm in a cold winter. The open gates of the cage shook with a deafening sneeze. Karama winced and slammed his tail against the wall in irritation. A deep crack crawled along the ceiling to the opposite corner, and, under the fox's gaze, it shyly closed, sending a stream of drops between the nine tails' ears. A deafening roar merged with another thunderous sneeze. Uzumaki! Ah! Even mentally, Naruto drawled. Stop sneezing like a bald chicken. Karama roared. A stream of water came down from the ceiling again. And what kind of dampness have you created here? Naruto sniffled, sniffled, irritating the fox more and more, and finally said plaintively and indignantly, It's cold here, Dadabi. So cling to the Uchiha tider. Naruto fell silent in amazement. Karama waited and winced under a furious cry. What? What what? Let me out. Dadabi! What kind of nonsense are you talking about lately? Shut your mouth. Karama growled, gradually getting irritated. Let me out. I'm in the room, by the way. I took this into account. Naruto fell silent, and after a couple of seconds, what the cub called his soul was pulled out. Karama shivered and with a loud bang materialized in another stone box that the humans loved so much. Karama! Naruto wheezed strangledly from somewhere on the side. I grew my own ass, move over. The fox stepped over and pressed his side against the wall. Naruto stood up and, grumbling, turned around with difficulty in the remaining space. The Uchiha sat in the corner, where, in Karama's purely personal opinion, he belonged. Tibi, can't you become a little smaller? Naruto muttered nasally, moving away towards Sasuke. Kurama ignored him just like the Uchiha's evil gaze, however tucked his tails under himself and lay down, leaving the corner in which he was sitting free. Well, Naruto, there's no more room left. Kurama calculated everything very accurately. Red, can you even hear me? Why the hell did you forget here? You yourself complained that it was cold. It's warm now, so shut up and don't disturb my sleep. The room really quickly warmed up with the warm breath and heat of the fox's fire chakra, so Naruto grumbled for order and calmed down. Kurama was already dozing when it finally dawned on Uzumaki that since the fox occupied most of the room, he and Sasuke would have to sleep close together. Kyuubi successfully pretended that the cub's cries did not wake him, and then, when the rat race of people finally died down, he actually fell asleep. He woke up late at night and, out of animal habit, silently sucked in the tart air, sniffing. Outside the fogged window, a blizzard howled furiously, it was echoed by the choking barking of local dogs, and from afar the approaching iridescent cry of the local fauna could be heard. The pack, completely starved by the harsh winter, surrounded the village, intending to profit from the fattened merchant carcasses, snack on the wiry residents, and run over the annoying dogs before the people came to their senses. 
It's not that Karama was in any way concerned about the fate of people, but for some reason it seemed that the cub sleeping sweetly next to the Uchiha would be dissatisfied. However, people could have waited. You really can't miss such a chance, can you? The fox carefully grabbed the Uzumaki with his tail, restrained himself from a malicious giggle, dumped him right on top of the Uchiha, and without waiting for them to wake up, roared, rise. The fuss and short furious battle that ensued later completely knocked all extraneous thoughts out of the nine tails. Naruto managed to be everywhere, driving away the animals, and Kurama only had time to rip their throats out. Don't understand that, of course, and not the enemy, but there was no choice. But then, when people were deciding some of their own affairs, Kurama disappeared from the general confusion, collapsed on the floor at the gate of his open cage, and, licking someone else's blood from his paws, made several conclusions. Well, first of all, it was fun, not fun, but it wasn't boring. What could be better than a fight? Secondly, this enterprising woman was still worth thanking. Karama strongly doubted that the old man, whom Naruto dubbed God's Dandelion, was unfamiliar with Fifth. In a very funny way, he thanked the cub and complained that the attack had taken him and Sasuke away from very important matters. And finally, thirdly, it is very good that the fox's excellent memory will allow him to preserve forever that piercing red face of the cub when he realized that he had woken up lying on the Uchiha. Nose to nose. Sasuke's dilated pupils were also worth saving, but the fox decided to process this information later. When he wakes up. Oh yes. Uzumaki, try not to make too much noise there. I don't like to sleep listening to human panting. What? Karama! Now everything is fine. 